Hey there, welcome to this lecture. Today in this lecture, we're going to discuss about what are the prerequisites we need to install for this backend project, and what are the things we need to install in our computer as well as. So let's try to have a look. So the first thing we need Docker desktop. So let's try to install Docker desktop. So in my case, I'm using this architecture, right? So it is, it's downloading, right? So once you have uh, downloaded the Docker desktop, then if you're using Mac architecture, then you can simply drag and drop these things to your know, application, right? Cool, so it is installed successfully. Now what we're going to do, we're going to install the Postman. So let's try to install Postman. So in this case, you can go to postman.com and go to products, and you can, you can click on the download Postman, which is going to redirect to download page where you can install the required version for your machine. So in my case, I'm using this one. So let's try to install this one. Perfect, so now it is installed. Let's try double click right here. Perfect, so now I have Postman. Now let's go to our database client. So one of the database client maybe you can install in your computer. So in this case, I'm gonna use this one. Let's say download for Mac. Perfect, then let's try to open the table plus DMZ as well as, right? Now let's try to drag these things to our, our application directory. Cool, so it is installed. So these are the prerequisites we need initially. Let's try to close everything and go back to our code editor. So here in this source code, we're going to create one file which is going to help us out to spin our database server. That is called Docker. So what is Docker? Docker is a kind of virtual machine which is going to spin one kind of like virtual environment for us where we can directly spin any kind of uh, our applications just like our database server or maybe operating system, anything we can spin. So Docker, you can say under the, under the hood, it is spinning some kind of infrastructure for you. It doesn't matter what kind of machine you are using. So Docker is always going to create, always going, going to fulfill all of the required dependencies without installing in your host machine. So you can say it is going to be spin some kind of like a virtual space for you where it is going to install, it is going to come along with all of these things together in an isolated container. So that is what we're going to do, right? So let's try to uh, create one file. This is going to be called docker compose file. Right, docker compose.yml. So let's try to add a couple of lines of code right here quickly. All right, so now let's try to understand this docker compose file. So here we can see this is our version number which we have mentioned. And while it comes to service, services is representing the isolated, the uh, Docker container where it is running using some kind of application or some kind of systems. So in our case, we, are, we have declared one service that is called department DB. So we are, we are saying to our Docker Compose, gonna say, hey Docker Compose, go ahead and spin one virtual environment for us where we can spin the PostgreSQL, right? And while it comes to PostgreSQL, you can see like, you know, we need to define some kind of like, you know, uh, environment variable for kickstart of our environment, right? So in this case, we are using image of PostgreSQL 14 and we are exposing the port number 5454. And this is the port number from internal, the, the Docker container port number. So once the Docker container is going to spin inside this, uh, this department DB service, right? And then we need to map this port number, docker container port number with our host machine port number. So that means once this docker container is going to spin, then it's going to be reachable by saying localhost 5454, right? So in my case, I, I don't have like a you know, 54323, it's occupied by some other service. So that's why I'm using like 5454. So in your case, maybe you can utilize any number of port right here, right? Now, deploy is self-explanatory. We're saying like we're going to use the replicated mode and we, we need only one replica. So you can use the multiple replica also where it's going to be uh, come to the place like you know, master and slave and all. So all of these things, advanced topics, maybe we can discuss while we're going to write uh, SQL uh, queries and all. And the environment, this is, you can find it out in the Docker Hub while you are going to visit this postcase image. Then there are certain default variables you can use for spinning Docker image. So that, that means these are the variables, environment variables, it's going to represent like while it's bootstrapping the database server, it can be used for this one, it, you can use for uh, the Postgres uh, default user, this is going to be password and this is, this is going to be our bootstrap DB. 
And this is the volume we are we are going to keep store our data in our our host machine. And this is the this is the part per hour uh, the the container, right? So that means while we are going to stop our container, then we will be going to lose all of the data. To get rid of this kind of scenarios, what we are going to do once we are going to spin our container, then each and every activity, whatever data we are going to store right there, it is going to explicitly store in our host machine. So it doesn't matter once we are uh, going to shut down our container, also still our data will be keep safe here. So I hope you understood like why, why this Docker Compose is needed and how uh, how these things going to be run. So now this is the time where we are going to spin our Docker Compose stuff. Now let's try to spin the Docker Compose here. So here we can see one directory I have created, but it is not required to create right here. Even if you delete this directory also, once we are going to spin this Docker Compose file, it's going to create automatically, right? Let's try to do that. So in this case, Docker Compose up. But right before uh, spinning this Docker Compose up, make sure you are you are spinning your uh, Docker desktop first, right? So if you are if you are not going to uh, spin your Docker desktop first, then this Docker Docker Compose file will be going to give you error, right? So let's try to spin this one. Perfect. Can you see this DB data is created inside this DB data? Whole bunch of like you know, logs are, are are created right there. Now let's try to check it out like the logs. You can see the at the end log it says database system is ready to accept connections. So now let's go ahead here to the database client that is we have already installed in our machine that is called table plus. So let's try to open table plus here. And I have some existing connections right there as well as but let's try to create a new one here. So in this case, we're going to use the PostgreSQL, right? And we're going to give a name, this is going to be departmental store, right? Then the socket will be 127.0.0.1. That is the localhost, uh, the the IP number, and you can the provide the port number. The port number will be 5454, 5454. And let's try to copy this user ID from here. We don't want to fall into trouble uh, by typing any kind of like you know typo right there. So password will be this one, and database also department DB. Right now, let's try to test the connection. Can you see it's a green means like in our connection is successful. Now let's try to uh, connect it. Can you see it is connected? So we don't have any tables so far. We're going to write a couple of migrations and tables and all those things to spin our application. Perfect. So now you understood like how we can integrate all of the stuff uh, and we can spin our database server as well as. In the next lecture, we're going to have a look at the ecosystem. What are the backend ecosystem we need to take care of? and how we can move forward with the coding part that is we are going to discuss right there. All right, then see you right there in the next lecture. Thank you.